This is our timeline of the history of genetics. So far, we've covered the important milestones up to this point. Yes, we've taken a look at the work of Gregor Mendel, followed by the work of Sutton and Boveri. This was the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Later, it was Thomas Hunt Morgan who put forth his work on the common fruit fly and achieved another milestone. Now comes the next one. After Morgan gave an experimental evidence of the fact that genes for the traits are present on the chromosomes, the scientific world then got together to find out what exactly makes up these genes and chromosomes. In other words, the chemical nature of this genetic material is what everyone was curious to know about. In the same era, a British bacteriologist was busy handling his pneumococcal strains. They are nothing but the bacteria named Streptococcus pneumoniae, which are the causative agents of pneumococcal infections. Frederick Griffith found out that there is some factor that helps transform one bacterial type into the other. Let's have a look at this remarkable experiment. To begin with, we need to get introduced to the two types of pneumococcal strains. This one is a smooth strain denoted as the S strain and this one is a rough strain denoted as the R strain. Why are they named so? This smooth strain, as we can see, has a smooth outer surface. It's the capsule around the cell wall which protects it from various threats. The presence of this capsule makes the strain virulent or strongly infectious to be precise. The absence of such a smooth coat makes the strain avirulent or non-infectious to be precise. Now you may ask, why is the R strain avirulent? It's the absence of the capsule which makes it susceptible to the immune cells of the host's body. Now getting back to Griffith's work, let's see what experiment he exactly performed. He first injected a mouse with the S strain, which is the smooth strain of the pneumococci. As expected, the mouse died. Similarly, on injecting another mouse with a rough strain, the mouse survived. This was pretty much anticipated by him because the rough strain is usually the avirulent one. What was done next? Now the third mouse was injected with the S strain but after the bacteria were heat killed. That means he heated the S strain to extreme temperatures which killed the virulent strain and made it ineffective. So the injected mouse survived. Now comes the last part. This time Griffith injected a mouse with a mixture of both rough strain and heat killed smooth strain. That's right, a mixture of the rough strain and the heat killed smooth strain. Now what do you think would have happened? Most of us would expect the mouse to survive because both are individually ineffective or avirulent. However, to his astonishment, the mouse did not survive. How did this happen? And what do you think Griffith concluded? With this, he concluded that there is something from the S strain that was passed on to the R strain, resulting it to turn virulent. Also, do you know what he recovered from the body of the mouse? He recovered live S strain. Surprising, isn't it? This further confirmed that the R strain was transformed into the virulent S strain. He named the transforming factor as the transforming principle. He did not really know what exactly this was and hence named it just the transforming principle. But he predicted that this could be the genetic material. Was this really the genetic material or was it something else? Let's find that out in the next part. Imagine we are given a bag full of flowers and we are told that there is one flower which has the Midas effect. Anything that the flower touches gets transformed into gold. But how will we find out which flower is the special one? All the flowers look more or less the same. Well, the only thing we can do is make all the flowers touch some object. Isn't that right? 
So examining every individual flaw is the only option we have. The story was similar in the case of transforming principle. After Griffith concluded his experiment on the bacteria named Streptococcus pneumoniae, the science world was now curious to know more about the transforming principle. Finding the answers was not a piece of cake though. It was almost two decades later that three scientists figured out what this transforming principle was. They tried finding out its chemical nature by testing every single component of the virulent bacterial strain. Let's move a step ahead in the timeline and understand the interesting experiment performed by Avery, McLeod and McCarty around the year 1944. The three scientists were quite fascinated with Griffith's work. Just like others, even they were curious to know what the transforming principle was. So they thought of continuing the same experiment with better research. Griffith concluded his experiment by inferring that there is some factor that's passed from heat-killed smooth strain to the rough strain which is avirulent. This factor transforms the avirulent strain to the virulent strain. So the three scientists thought of planning the experiment by targeting the heat-killed smooth strain. Just like a bag filled with flowers, the smooth strain cells had various chemical components in them. And just like how we had to examine the touch of individual flowers, the scientists mixed every single chemical component individually with the rough strain. So let's say this smooth strain cell had these four components A, B, C and D in it. They mixed the component A with the rough strain and injected it in a live mouse. Similarly, they mixed all the other components individually with the rough strains and injected the mixtures in different mice. What they found at the end was, only one of those components among all was effective in transforming the rough strain. It was the case in which the mouse died. The conclusion was that component D transformed the R strain. They isolated this component from the heat-killed strain and tested it further. On chemical analysis, they could figure out that the molecules had a chemical composition similar to that of DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid, abbreviated as DNA, was known to people by this time. But it was not given much importance. Nobody assumed that it could be such a vital part of the cell. In fact, people thought that proteins made up the cells. And it was also believed that proteins make up the genetic material. So this experiment was a huge breakthrough in genetics. Many tests were carried out to investigate this further and the chemical composition of this transforming principle was found. It had components in the ratio that were found in the DNA molecules. So to further understand its nature, this component was tested using chemicals that break down the constituents. For example, certain enzymes like protease degrade proteins. Use of such chemicals help us identify the constituents in a given sample as they will degrade specific molecules only. So in this case, the chemicals used to degrade DNA were used along with others and it was found that the chemicals successfully broke down the molecules. It implied that the molecules were that of DNA. This chemical analysis helped in understanding that the transforming principle was nothing else but DNA. And this wasn't easily accepted as a fact. A few years later, another experiment helped confirm the fact that it's indeed the DNA which is transforming principle. Let's find out more about the experiment in the next part. Until then, do not forget to subscribe to our channel in order to get notified about our latest uploads.